Hello fellow fly tires, this is Lance from Fly Fish Food and I want to share with you one of my absolute favorite caddis dry flies. Uh, I'm probably better known for nymphs but uh, this caddis pattern for me has produced a lot of fish across the world. So this one is the uh, corn fed caddis. Uh, corn fed in that I use CDC for this pattern but uh, CDC patterns, uh, let's say traditionally, are a bit more on the sparse side. This one's going to use a lot of CDC, so it's kind of a, a bulky corn-fed, if you will, corn-fed caddis. So it's a little heftier use of CDC, and I hope you like it. I know your fish will. So I'm starting with a TMCO 100 hook in the vise. We've got a 14 here. You can tie these in lots of colors. I'm going to tie it in a tan size, or sorry, tan color today. You could also do it in an olive or a gray or anything to match whatever caddis body you'd like. I've got some MFC thread here in uh, light brown, and this one is 6 aught for this size. You could use some thinner stuff if you want to do smaller sizes, but for the 14, this is about right. So I'm going to just start the thread here, work to the bend of the hook, get rid of that thread. Next, I'm going to tie in a trailing shuck, which is um, some PMD shuck color of Antron yarn from Wapsi. And it doesn't take very much of this. I oftentimes use about half of the strand. It kind of, on the card, it comes a full strand, and I just split the strand in half to make a little bit more sparse shuck here. I'm going to tie it in. Because it's a synthetic, it's kind of nice because you don't have to worry about how long it is in the back because I can come back and trim it. I'll wrap it forward about two-thirds of the hook shank then I'll come back here and trim it to maybe oh, one half of the hook shank. Okay now I'm going to make a thread wrap uh, that's going to be some ribbing so I took a loop of thread in my fingers and I'm going to capture it with the thread and then cut one side of it off it doesn't really matter which side and tie back along the shank this is going to be my ribbing so rather than tying a separate material in, or and you could do something like wire, but uh, on dry flies I, I try not to do anything extra weighty if I don't have to. So then we're going to add the body. Again, you can tie this in lots of colors. This is super fine and tan. Again, you could do it in olive or gray or gray olive or any color you like. So just some tan, super fine. Super fine is great because it dubs really easy and it makes a very, very thin dubbing noodle. So it won't take very much of this. Like always, dubbing less is more. I'm going to dub it and then slide it down to the shank and then start covering my body. And you can build a little bit of a taper if you like, or you can just leave it nice and flat. I don't think that the fish care either way. The naturals will have a little bit of a taper to them. I didn't quite put enough on, so I'm adding a bit more here. See if I can build a little tiny bit of a taper there at the end. Okay, so we've built the body. Then I'm just going to hang this on the bobbin cradle, catch it on the eye, and I'm going to wrap the thread now the opposite direction I wrap the dubbing. So it's counter wrapping it, it's adding durability, and it actually makes a little bit of a segmented look. You can see that wrap through there. Then I'll just capture it with the thread and get rid of the thread ribbing. Okay, next up is the CDC. This is natural CDC, just natural done. Uh, again, you could vary the colors here, but natural done is what I do on almost all of mine. And I've got four uh, feathers of CDC here. I'm going to use the natural tips. I want to get them relatively even, so I'm going to take just a second here and try and pull the tips down so that most of the feather tips are about the same length. They don't have to be exact. A caddis wing will be a little bit rough. Not going to be your super clean cut, but is uh, as close as possible. That's pretty good. Then I'm going to tie those in over the shank, and I want them to be to terminate just barely shy of the shuck. So a little bit beyond the dubbing, maybe halfway through the shuck. So I've got them uh, measured there. Then I'll tie them on with the thread. This thread's nice for this because you can apply a fair bit of pressure and it doesn't have a lot of bulk, a lot of buildup. So they're anchored in there pretty well, as you can see. I can pull them around bending the hook. They're not going to go anywhere. Then I'm going to go in and trim those away. Maybe clean up the butts just a little. All right. And then next up, we're going to add a little bit of poly wing, parapost wing. So this is just parapost in white. Uh, 
This is for visibility and it probably adds a little bit of flotation too. On this, just like the, the trailing shuck, I like to separate the fiber to maybe a half or at least two thirds, mostly for tie in bulk. And I'm just gonna tie it in over the top and capture it with the thread and then fold it back so that I don't have the butts to deal with. This will help build a little bit of a nice taper as well on the head and it's anchored in so it's not going to go anywhere. If you tie it in and just trim it you have to really latch down on the thread to make sure it doesn't come loose and that will work but usually when I do that and come in and trim the butts it leaves much more bulk here on the head so this just eliminates some of that bulk. Then I'll come back through here separate my CDC and I like to trim this a little shorter than the CDC it's just for me to see more so than the fish. So then we've got our wing on top makes it nice and visible for us and now to the slightly trickier part not too tricky but a little bit I've got a Stonfo dubbing twister here this is my favorite dubbing twister I'm going to create a, a loop and we're basically just going to make a CDC hackle here I've wrapped the bobbin around the thread twice to capture it together so it terminates right at the hook um, without having a gap there so let's see if I can flip this around if I open it and get it untwisted anyway see if you can make make so you can see that yeah it terminates right at the hook without a big gap there then once we've got this uh, this dubbing twirler here this when I pull down on the on the two arms when these arms get pulled together it when I pull down on the tool it pulls the thread together like this and when I let it go it separates it so I'm going to get these back in my thread here so you can see what I mean let's see if open up and then close it back down so what I'm going to do next is use either a Stonfo clip or a Petagene tool if you have one of those and create a CDC loop. So I've got a couple of large CDC feathers here. They're side by side. I'm going to stroke the fibers down. Then I'm going to grab hold of them with a clip tool like that. I don't know if you can tell what's going on there. I've got the stem here and the tool next to it that's clear so it's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to trim the fibers away from the stem and it's going to leave me just the fibers sticking out of the tool. Can you see those right there? Then what I'm going to do is get inside the little triangle that's made by this dubbing loop and because of the pressure, the tension that I can create with this Stonfo dubbing tool, I can stick the clip in here at the bottom where it's open, slide it up to the top, and then pull down on the dubbing tool so it pinches all that CDC in place and then release the tool and now I have all of those CDC fibers stuck in the thread. Now I can give them a spin and create a nice little rope and a little hackle if you will of CDC. If it gets a little unruly you can usually get a little brush or a little comb or I oftentimes even just use velcro like this just a little velcro and tease it out and then it makes a nice little hackle of CDC Next up, and really I should have done this a second ago, but we can still make it work. I'm going to add a little bit of dubbing to the thread just to make it so that this thread loop has something to stick to when I go to wrap it around. And then we can take this CDC dubbing and wrap it around the shank. This is going to get really buggy, but that's okay. You want this fly really buggy. around until we get right up to the eye like that and then I'm just going to capture the remainder of the thread dubbing loop or CDC hackle loop with the tying thread trim it off and we've got a really buggy caddis fly at this point I usually just whip finish pull some of those fibers back with my fingers try and make a relatively clean head give it a pull on the thread and we're we're done we can go back if you want and you can really clean this up again with the velcro or a dubbing brush 
And if these really long fibers bother you, you can cut them off or trim them down. I oftentimes leave them in place. I don't find that it bothers the fish at all. And I think they capture a little bit of air and they trap the fly on the surface. That's the corn fed caddis. Really buggy. It will sit pretty low because the CDC is nice and soft. It's not as stiff as hackle. So it's a nice kind of emerging type pattern, although I fish it as a dry lot and even skate it and twitch it. Um, give that one a try. I think you'll find that's really effective even for super selective trout.